We start tonight with the government's back-to-work legislation to end the strike at Canada Post. In a few moments, I'll speak with MPs who are seized with the back-to-work legislation. But first, I'm joined by Mike Panasek. He is president of the Canadian Union of Postal Workers and Hassan Hussef, who is the head of the Canadian Labour Congress. Both of you, thanks very much for uh, joining us. Um, I want to start with Mike Panasek. Let's start with how things have gotten to where they've gotten to now. A lot of Canadians are asking that, but obviously uh, Parliament is seized with the back-to-work legislation. How have things gotten to where they are now? Well, we're in this mess precisely because the previous government brought in back-to-work legislation, which was later ruled to be unconstitutional and struck down. Uh, but that prevented us from addressing issues over the last, uh, well, decade, really, as issues have piled up while they restructured Canada Post and made changes. And things have reached a breaking point now. Uh, we have an injury crisis at Canada Post. Uh, we're now the most injured group of workers in the federal sector at five times the average injury rate. A and it's got to be addressed. Okay, uh, let's just stop on that and because at your press conference, that's something a lot of Canadians may be really surprised to hear. You said that, that you, to be a postal worker now is the most dangerous occupation in Canada. You said it's more dangerous than a longshoreman or a miner. What kind of injuries are you seeing and why? Well, all kinds. We have uh, slips, trips, and falls. We have uh, uh, many of our members work inside in, in industrial settings, and so there's all sorts of accidents. Uh, but where we've seen the, the biggest increase is in uh, delivery operations, uh, where we now have uh, postal workers out delivering late into the night, uh, and which is more dangerous in and of itself. And Canada Post's only solution to this is to give us headlamps. Mm -hmm. Now, you say that a lot of the issue about safety is also related to the increase in parcel post, because one of the things that a lot of Canadians are just starting to realize is that after having said, sort of presiding over what they consider a decline in postal service, a lot of it is also attributable to the fact that you're delivering far, far more parcels for the, the private sector. Well, well certainly the, the nature of the work is changing, uh, but also the, the work methods have changed. Um, it doesn't have to be as dangerous as it is, and it didn't used to be. And, and if I could just give you one example, it, it used to be that letter carriers uh, would deliver with one bundle of mail in their hand mm -hmm. uh, as they walked. Well, they've changed that system, so now they have a, a bundle of letters, they have a bundle of magazines, they have a bundle of flyers, they have their parcels on top, and they're supposed to juggle all of this stuff uh, while they walk and deliver. And so, of course, it's led to more slips, trips, falls, and, and injuries. Okay, um, I want to get to the bigger picture in a moment. But um, we have had, the government has named a mediator, uh, two different sessions with a mediator, which have been unsuccessful. Why is this taking so long? Why is there no progress in these negotiations? Well, we've seen this again and again from Canada Post. They only have one game at the negotiating table. They sit back and wait for the legislation, round after round. Uh, and so now that the government's introduced this legislation, you have to ask yourself, what incentive do they have to negotiate? Okay. Uh, Hassan Youssef, you've seen this before. You have been with the labor movement for many, many years. Um, you were saying that you trace the origins of this conflict, and you mentioned it, Mike, to the ruling in 2011. 2011, the Harper government ruled Postal Union back to work. Uh, there's back to work legislation. The courts found it illegal. They struck down that ruling in 2016. Explain to us the significance of that ruling, because a lot of Canadians, without getting into too many legal details, a lot of Canadians would be puzzled by that. Well, you know, negotiations always about how does the union actually exert some pressure on the employer to reach a fair collective agreement, because that's mm -hmm. ultimately the objective is not to go on strike or to disrupt the business, but to reach a fair cl uh, collective agreement. Yeah. In the absence of doing that, where the employers are intransient or refuse to bargain, uh, they use, have to use tactics to put pressure on, on, on the corporation. In Canada Post in 2011, they were trying to get the corporation to address the issues. Finally, the union, of course, rotating strikes, and finally the corporation resort to locking them out, I think in tandem with the government strategy to legislate the workers back to work. So the government did legislate. Uh, the court ruled, first of all, the arbitrator they had appointed. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, was not, uh, 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 should be presiding over the dispute. First of all, he was not uh, bilingual. He didn't, he lacked the skills and the government moved again to reappoint somebody else, which is just a, a hack of the government. But in addition to that, the courts, of course, uh, when the, 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 the case finally went to the Supreme Court, the court already had decided that the right to strike is now a fundamental right protected by their Charter of Rights and Freedom. And this is in regard to a case from Saskatchewan that went to the Supreme Court. So, of course, it was later, the court said this is fundamentally 
a violation of um, the fundamental rights. Since then, uh, one more point. Yeah. Since then, Canada moved, this government moved, to ratify two important conventions in the ILO that conferred the right to strike as a fundamental right of international law, and mm -hmm. Canada would abide by it. And secondly, Canada also moved to ratify a convention in the ILO to uh, recognize a collecting bargain as a fundamental right in that same context. So it's, it, it is fundamentally changed the equation, and the government acknowledged that, and yet to see the back-to-work legislation is truly troubling and, and worrying that this cannot be a trend where the country should be going. Okay, Mike Palasek, let's talk about the back-to-work legislation. The person that, whose image you see just right behind you, uh, Patty Haidu, the Labour Minister in Parliament today, said that the mediator, and they're calling it an arbitrator mediator, who's going to be named, uh, that that person will have guiding principles, and she says that those guiding principles are about as good as you could hope for. They have the guiding principles of uh, taking into account health and safety, taking into account uh, e equal, va uh, equal pay for work of equal value, and taking into account fair treatment of part-time workers, as well as taking into account the long-term viability of Canada Post. And she said, she told Parliament today that with principles like that, you shouldn't be concerned about the mediation, that it will come out with a fair end result. How do you answer that? Well, to be clear, uh, the government doesn't need to violate constitutional rights in order to uh, enforce these principles that they claim to have. Uh, the government is responsible for Canada Post. They can simply pick up the phone and direct Canada Post to respect uh, the negotiations process, uh, to deliver equal pay for women, uh, mm -hmm a safe work environment, and a work-life balance. These are all things the government claims to stand for, and yet you now have a Crown Corporation doing exactly the opposite. One of the accusations that came out at the press conference this morning was some people, in some quarters, there's been, there's been reports of checks, very important checks, like uh, social benefits checks not being delivered during the strike. That was one of the things that was pointed to. Uh, how do you uh, address that particular thing that's come up as, as an accusation of a result of the strike? Well, we actually have a memorandum of agreement signed with Canada Post to make sure that socioeconomic checks are delivered uh, through any strike action. Uh, and we've signed these agreements uh, with Canada Post for decades. Uh, so these cover things like pension checks, uh, uh, disability checks, because our fight isn't with the most vulnerable people in our society. Um, we understand the importance of this service. And in fact, we've been the biggest defenders of this service. Uh, so it's troubling to hear that Canada Post management may not be letting some of these things through. Now, obviously, you've heard the other big argument that's being made by Liberal MPs in Parliament, and that is that it's gotten to the point, after a year of negotiations, after five weeks of strike, rotating strikes, uh, and with trucks full of mail uh, in processing plants, uh, in parking lots, uh, and Canada Post refusing uh, to accept international parcels, uh, it's gotten to the point where small businesses, small and medium-sized businesses across the country are suffering and then they have to act. How do you respond to that? Well, it's funny, we're, we've heard those claims from Canada Post about this big backlog. As far as we're concerned, that's fiction. There isn't a backlog. We're, we're getting reports from our members all over the place in our major plants uh, that they're not even operating at capacity. Where does things go from here? Uh, first of all, Hassan Youssef, you've, you've been around these uh, conflicts. Where do you see things going from here? Well, I still think there's time, and the union is at the table with, with of course, the special uh, mediator that's been appointed and the, and the corporation trying to reach an agreement before this government pass back to work legislation. I think that can happen, but the government have to exert some pressure on Canada Post to come there with a commitment to actually deal with the issue the unions have identified. Parliament should not be making a decision for this employer that they should be jointly working out because the best solutions in collective bargaining is when the party actually negotiate the collective agreement. They understand what it means and fundamentally will help them manage the re relationship going on after the, 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 the process is finished in collective bargaining. All legislation does is it entrench the animosity, the distrust, and of course the, wor the worries that the worker have that despite their best effort to get the corporation to do this, no, they're going to have to wait even further to see what the results are going to be in, in that regard. And that, that, that's really troubling in my view. Okay, last question to you. I know at your press conference you mentioned possible legal action. What would you do? The, the government brings in the legislation, you go to court and challenge the legality of it. The last time it took five years to get a final ruling from the Supreme Court of Canada. What does that do? Uh, 
Well, and we've seen this again and again in this country where governments introduce unconstitutional back-to-work legislation. It gets struck down years later, but by then the damage is already done. Uh, so yes, we're going to fight back against this legislation, and we're going to fight back by any means at our disposal. We'll fight in the streets, we'll fight in the courts, and any other option. The uh, perennial question with Canada Post is, do you think you have public support? Because uh, so many Canadians say, my whole adult life I've remembered problems, quote unquote, at the post office. Well, I think people want postal workers to go home safe at night. I think the people of this country support the idea that women should be paid equally for work of equal value. Uh, at the end of the day, these are the issues on the bargaining table. Okay, I want to thank both of you. We will watch this with great interest. Thanks for coming in and sharing your expertise. Thanks for having us. Thank I mean, you. listen, a separate matter. I think that, you know, the courts have been telling governments consistently that their action is illegal. And at some point, the courts are going to essentially reward uh, uh, workers and their union with damages for the actions of government. Because uh, if a fundamental right of a, as a constitutional right can be trivialized, no matter whether it's this government or any other government, then what is those rights all about anyway, if they're not to be taken seriously by our elected leaders, but respected at the same time? And I think fundamentally in our democratic society, mm -hmm. if the constitution can be override in terms of rule of law in a society, then what protection do we have about anything? And I think it's fundamental in, 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 in the context of fairness in this society, government need to take care because collective bargaining, by the, for the most part, 99% of the time it works in this country. Mm -hmm. Once in a while it do falls apart, but it requires support mm -hmm. and efforts of government to, to match that rather than to try to, of course, expand it and, and, and confound it for workers to find a decent deal at the end of the day. Okay, we will watch this with interest. Thanks for coming in. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very kindly.